All right, welcome back to uh, the part two of my talk. It's uh, it's already uh, longer than I, way longer than I expected. Anyway, um, uh, where was I? So let me just pull from our repository. What happened? Ah, we have here console.log. We added console.log. No, we didn't. Yeah. There. Let's pull. <clears throat> so this commit adds uh adds mock service worker to our test actually we should just look i think i can do this yeah so what I did was uh, I deleted the mock file for Axios. <clears throat> so in our tests, we would be using the actual Axios library. library. Uh, I, I said earlier that that's bad, but uh, with, with MSW, we would see that it's okay. So yeah, this signifies that we've deleted it. Then yeah. <clears throat> we added MSW here. We replaced the uh, import to Axios. And we imported MSW and MSW node. We have here REST and GraphQL uh, functions and uh, set up server so yeah we didn't even though we uh, we changed the uh, mocking from uh, library level mocking using axios using an axios mock file much of the tests don't change. They uh, remain the same. We will discuss the changes uh, in a while. So here, I'm already testing the the uh, GraphQL request. It's a very short test in which I just fetch uh, or I just uh, take the user section element by selecting the uh, user text, then asserting that <clears throat> it would generate this text with the username and the user email. So that's it for the diff. Uh, so let's see that in action. So we are still uh, using this items uh, array. 
but instead of providing it as a uh, mock resolve value of Axios, we're actually intercepting the network request. So we have here a couple of uh, handlers. If you're familiar with uh, Express.js, it's, it's quite similar in which uh, here we are using the REST API of uh, or the REST function of mock service worker and we declare that whenever there's a uh, get request to this uh, particular URL use this uh, response handler so we have a callback here that takes in three arguments request the request object the response object and uh, context context is a set of tools that uh, mock, se mock service worker provides that uh, allows you to much like jest it just helps you uh, or it helps uh, make your job easier so here whenever we whenever mock service or whenever jest uh, encounters a request to this url it allows mock service worker to intercept that request and to process that request according to how you want the uh, the api or the mock api to respond so here we are just responding with a 200 200 okay uh, status then we are returning a json object with our original items array We can check that, okay? Ah, first, let's just uh, ensure that what we did doesn't uh, did, or didn't uh, break our tests. Let's just start our tests. Run them again. So yeah, we <clears throat> our tests here are still passing, and uh, this is our new test that uh, I uh, I noted earlier, and this this tests our GraphQL uh, API. <clears throat> I mean. It tests the behavior according to the return of our GraphQL API. So all is well and good. So let's verify if uh, the, the API request is actually being intercepted by Mock Service Worker. So let's uncomment that and uh, yeah. Here, as you can see, uh, mock service worker received the uh, request object. I think you can see here the uh, even the the query string. I forgot how, but uh, you can do that. So if you, depending on your imagination, you could do uh, do uh, tests here that assert that the the component that's calling this API should follow a certain set of guidelines, and if it doesn't, you could throw an error. Depends on your uh, requirements. 
So yeah, that's uh, for REST APIs. So to set up a uh, Mac service worker, at least for the node uh, part, it's very similar to how Express works, in which you uh, provide uh, handlers to the server. Then here we have test hooks. Before all runs this, before all the tests uh, are run, after each runs this, after each, yeah, it's in the name actually, after each test, uh, for example, this, after each individual test, after this test, after each will run, after this test, after each, after each will run. After all will run, it's the opposite of before it's it's the opposite it's the opposite of before all in which it will run this code after all the run the, all the tests have been run so we declared here that our the fake server that uh, gener that uh, msw has generated should listen to uh, network requests and after each uh, test it should reset all handlers. We need to do that so that uh, any any side effects or any uh, output that uh, the handler uh, received and done during the a, a, a particular uh, test should not affect any other tests. They should be uh, this this these tests should not affect each other and. Uh, the set handlers allows us, allows us to do that or to ensure that then finally after all the tests have been run we want our fake server to stop listening to network requests so we close it <clears throat> so yeah that's for your rest uh, api I think we changed something here. What changed? Uh, not this one. This one. Ah, uh, yeah, because we aren't using axios.get anymore. So. We had to update the test to account for that. I what I mean is we no, we aren't using the mocking for axios.get anymore. We are using the actual axios library. So in 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 consequence, as a consequence of that, uh, our integration tests also is also uh, covering tests for axios. Uh, and we're asserting that Axios should behave in a way that's consistent with uh, with our requirements. So, if for some re reason the authors of Axios change the behavior of Axios, this test would uh, our tests would capture that, as opposed to having mocked Axios outright uh, originally. If the uh, API of Axios changes. Our tests would not detect that, and uh, our users will, uh, of course, complain. So yeah, our uh, with by using mock service worker, we are able to uh, expand the coverage of our tests with just a few lines. Now let's go to the. Uh, GraphQL tests. <clears throat> so here I declared I declared a uh, GraphQL handler using the GraphQL uh, function of mock service worker. 
and I'm saying here that if a query to uh, this user query is uh, initiated, Mac service worker should intercept that and use this handler uh, to generate a response. So here I'm generating a response. Again, I'm using the context uh, context helper helper tools like this that mimics a delay in uh, in the response of a server. I'm declaring here a a, a second of delay. <clears throat> then I return a fake user. So the fake user is a uh, is a is an object that has a username and email field, and again it's generate it, it's being generated by faker. Sometimes you'd have to declare here the type name, say user, depending on the uh, on your uh, uh, schema. It's a lot easier to do the, to do to do to do that here as opposed to say uh, Apollo Mac, Mac provider. Uh, since Ma Apollo Mac provider implements um, uh, type names and uh, caching, it's a little tricky to to make it work. At least in my experience, and using Mac service worker. It's just one line. <laughs> so we don't need that here. So I remove that. Again, we test or we verify if uh, mock service worker is actually intercepting the uh, request. There. So here, as you can see here, this is the same uh, query string, uh, GraphQL query string that we declared earlier, in which we declared the uh, <coughs> query user and provide it with variable ID. And we explain we retrieve the properties user properties username and email for the particular user and there's also a variables object this is the variables that we provide so again depending on your requirements you can use uh, mock service for, uh, the mock service worker handler to check that it's actually providing the, the the proper variables and to throw errors whenever whenever uh, it's not adhering to the to the API of your GraphQL uh, of your GraphQL server. So yeah. Oops. <clears throat> then we go here. Yeah, it, this is straightforward. Again, we uh, render the search form and use the return get by text helper to query that uh, the generated HTML doc and get and from that html dom we find the user text and uh, we get the user section and we expect that user section to have a text of fetching user if uh, while while the fetch is ongoing and when the uh, fetch is done we expect that uh, section to have a text of hello, the username, and the email. So yeah, that's uh, 
that's it, I think. Just a few lines. Uh, we've already been we've we've already uh, tested our uh, GraphQL 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 enabled UI. There are other APIs, of course, that I won't be uh, discuss anymore, like uh, GraphQL dot mutation and GraphQL dot uh, rest dot post and other things. Those are available in here. So Mock Service Worker is actu was actually uh, originally uh, designed for the browser. And that's why it's called the uh, Service Worker. But we already have as I've uh, demonstrated, <clears throat> we can mock. Uh, we can mock APIs inside the Node environment too, using Jest. So, the API is al also very small, and the advantage of this is. While we're uh, we're apparently creating servers, we actually aren't. We are still in the in the uh, context of Jest or in Jest environment, as opposed to something like creating an actual mock server. Yeah, we can use something like this to, and run run this uh, mock server to to intercept our tests, but this generates another another um, node process, and uh, it makes our tests slow, slower than you know using. Mock Service Worker. By the way, you can use Mock Service Worker during development. You know, uh, stick it into your React application, and for example, you don't uh, you your API is ready yet. You could use this to to mimic or to mock your API while uh, you're developing your uh, front end UI application, while you wait for for your uh, API to be done. So yeah, there's uh, other uh, other APIs here that you could use. And yeah, this one is very important. You could override uh, the implementation of your mock service worker on a per uh, on a per test level by using once. So this will override uh, for example this implementation and uh, you could control the response according to your uh, requirements. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, uh, that's our tools. Let me go back to our presentation. So a few tips that I personally follow. Don't try to test everything all at once. Start with the uh, business critical uh, use cases. Uh, having a, f a, a few smoke tests is better than uh, having no tests at all. So again, start with business critical. For example, uh, generating passwords or or you want the user to <clears throat> you want to ensure that the user or or a form is submitting whenever the user is uh, 
interacts with it, interacts with the uh, with the form. Those are types of uh, tests that you could do. Again, yeah, in relation to that, 100% testing coverage is a myth. Don't obsess over this. Um, instead, strive to have tests that have great value. You know, again, we go back to the business critical uh, tests. Uh, figure out for yourself which which uh, behavior uh, you want to ensure and uh, create tests for that. Never mind things like, like uh, never mind tri tri trivial things like pixel, pixel perfection. You don't need that. No? You don't test for that. Unless, of course, uh, anyway, there are, there are tools for that, you know, but uh, there aren't re really critical to your business. Yeah, that's for actual user interaction, not implementation details. Again, think in terms of a user. Whenever you write tests, think how a user interacts with your application and write your tests around that instead of testing that this component should have this type of class or this, this, uh, this button should have this type of color or this type of font. No. In the grander scheme of things, it's important to just anticipate how a user would interact would interact with your application and test that interaction. Again, what the user sees is all is mostly text. They will uh, gravitate towards those. Uh, those uh, HTML elements that are visual and you have to reflect that in your tests so integration tests for most things like what I've uh, demonstrated that for a few lines of code you are already able to test a lot a lot of aspects of your application not just one or a single uh, single piece of your uh, application unit tests are, are still uh, valuable but use them sparingly use them to test uh, computation critical uh, logic like yeah we have that example of addition of course you have to test that you uh, you have to write unit tests for addition or for uh, mathi mathematical uh, computation but for other th other things especially in ui go for integration tests snapshot tests for very rare occasions and probably never <laughs> uh I use this for writing tests if I don't have the time and I usually just replace them after. I will replace them with integration tests. Then E2E tests and visual regression tests if you have the time and the resources because this, these really, uh, really uh, eat a lot of time and resource. So here's the testing pyramid. Before we had snapshot testing, unit testing, integration testing, and end-to-end -end testing. What this means is um, before it was encouraged to have a lot of snapshot tests, a lot of unit tests, some integration tests, and a few end-to-end -end tests. But we, with the React testing library, it has changed the game. Now, the bulk of our tests is integration, a few unit tests, a few end-to-end -end tests, and a very minuscule amount of snapshot testing. 
of course this is this isn't just the uh these are aren't just the uh, available libraries out there there are other things for example for end-to-end -end testing we have cypress which i really uh, highly recommend selenium web driver this one is really heavy puppet peer and phantom js then this is a different paradigm which is a true behavior driven development uh, as showed shown earlier we are i'm using it and the description of the test but in gherkin they have this a convention when you where you declare given when and then i won't discuss this you could uh, if you're interested you could just uh look into cucumber JavaScript, uh, cucumber js for visual regression testing we have storybook with uh, third party uh, plugins we have phantom css gemini and webdriver css which is, uses Selenium web, web driver. We also have other testing frameworks other than uh, Jest. We have this one, Mocha, I, I used to use before Jest came around. Jasmine, Ava, and uh, Tate. These are a couple of the newer ones. Assertion libraries. This Chai is usually used in conjunction with Mocha or Jasmine. But in Jest, that's already built in. Uh, Chai provides you with uh, the uh, expect uh, function. Mocking libraries, again, this is built in. Um, this is a built in feature in Jest. But in the earlier days, we used to uh, combine Mocha, Chai, and Sinon. It's the, it's the holy trinity of testing in JavaScript before Jest came along and a few links of course we've already shown this testinglibrary.com the website of uh, mock service worker uh, faker.js and this one is a must read best practices in react testing Kent Dodds uh, ha uh, created a blog that yeah uh, tells us to stop mocking fetch or axios and just use mock service worker he describes it in detail in this uh, blog post so if you want to reach me i have a facebook page uh rem.lampa yeah maybe uh there's a there's a, uh what's this called i just got an accent <laughs> Lampa. <laughs> so uh, on other social media platforms I have here my handle is Ramlampa without the dot. So I'm on Twitter, YouTube. I have a lot of videos on YouTube when I was uh, when I, I was still streaming. Of course GitHub, Medium, Medium, Instagram and LinkedIn. I also maintain a blog barely maintain a blog on remlampa.com and uh, my photography is available on lansangan.com so thank you i leave you with uh, this quote from vernon howard uh, especially for those who weren't able to grasp a lot of the concepts that i've, I've, I've tried to discuss in my limited time Always walk through life as you as if you have something new to learn, and you will. Don't ever think that uh, you know everything, because the moment that you think that you're above all knowledge, you stop learning. So go into the world thinking that you have a lot to learn, even from people you don't expect. Uh, to learn from you know so that's it i'll I, I don't know what's what's going to be the format uh but if 
uh, there's going to be a question and answer i'll be around so thank you for uh taking the time to uh listen to my very lengthy <laughs> uh talk and uh yeah i'm i'll be seeing you around